Now, the other day I was just about to subscribe to Nihao Kailan's OnlyFans when I realized I have absolutely no money left. Shucks. Now, where the heck did I spend all my money? That brings me to my first regret about the MCAT. That's wasting too much money. Now, the MCAT is hard, and the MCAT is important, and to do well, it doesn't require all the prep books in the world. Now, a lot of companies love preying on the fact that you don't want to jeopardize your education for a few hundred dollars, so you go out and you buy the latest model. Yeah, I got this bad boy from my parents for Christmas, and it cost them 200 bucks. And when I got sent back to home because of COVID, it was stuck in my dorm, so I had to go out and buy a new set. So I went on Facebook and I found some random Indian dad who was like, yeah, I would have sold you $70 for these new two book sets. It's like, almost like brand new. Almost, I bought for my son, almost like brand new. And I personally thought, like, oh, sounds like someone's son didn't study enough. But I was also like, oh, that's 70 bucks. That's less than half of the price that I paid for my original book set. What's the harm? So I bought these two new book sets. And by the time I had brought my original set back, I compared it to the new set. And in fact, there's almost no differences. In fact, the only difference I found in this book was one new question that they added. Just one new question. Now, you can ask yourself, is that one new question gonna be the reason why you score 10 points higher in the MCAT? Definitely not. So don't be scared and have to force yourself to spend the extra couple hundred dollars to get the latest shit, because these books are basically exactly the same. The one thing that is different is that the newer editions will correct some of the mistakes in the older editions, but if you go on the Kaplan website, which I will link below, you can actually find the corrections that Kaplan has provided for the older books. And another thing is flashcards. The only thing I would recommend you getting physically is that one seven book set and I would recommend you getting a cheap and old used copy because they're basically all identical. I bought these flashcards because once again, I was like, I didn't want to jeopardize my education for 30 bucks. And after I bought them, I didn't use them a single time. They're pretty useless. So what I would recommend for you is go find your own Indian dad on Facebook or Craigslist and buy the cheapest seven book set for the new MCAT that you can find. And instead of using flashcards, just get the Miles Down deck for Anki and it serves the exact same purpose, if not better. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, there are good tests out there and there are shit tests. And quite frankly, Kaplan makes tests that are absolute shit. They're just not good. They're like 10 points deflated and they have very little diagnostic value for you. In fact, they require you to memorize too many details that you would never know, and they test you more on just recall of like random obscure things than actually analysis on pretty simple concepts, which is what the AMC specializes more in. So personally for me, I believe that having done the three Kaplan tests, it was just a complete waste of time because when I was reviewing them, I would memorize so much obscure detail that was just not relevant. And because they, they de really demoralize you. You score like a 505 and you think that that's the highest you can score, when in reality, the tests are just not good. So there's that entire idea of like zone of proximal development that you'll learn when going over the MCAT. And that's actually true. So for example, the AMC material is right on target for the difficulty of the MCAT. And the next set material is a little bit harder. Same thing with UWorld, a little bit harder. So doing questions that are a little bit harder might help you to be able to do things that are easier. But sometimes when you just do questions that are just way too hard that you would never be expected to know anything along those lines, it actually harms you more than it does good. Do I think that I shouldn't have done the Kaplan questions at all? Not necessarily. But instead of taking them as practice tests and like using them as such, they would have been much better tools for just like going over a little bit of content, doing them as sort of like a section bank, untimed, something along those lines. That way I would have been able to use them to, to solely see what material I needed to understand more and to look at the format of the MCAT without actually like thinking that the MCAT was like the way that Kaplan presents the questions. If you're trying to run a mile, running three or four miles during your training might be beneficial for you, but what's the benefit of running a marathon if you're training for the mile, you know what I mean? And that's what it feels like. You want to do something that's a little bit harder, like the next set material, but you don't want to use the material that's just way too hard as the baseline and the thing to judge yourself for how you're going to do. Now, this one's for the guy that's taken most of the classes required for the MCAT and also thinks he's a pretty smart guy. Like in my case, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm not gonna lie about that one. I'm not gonna skirt around that one. If you feel like you're not that confident in general and that like you're someone that typically struggles with a lot of classes, this tip might not be for you. But for the guy that does feel like he's a pretty smart and adequate guy, I would say that it's not always necessarily the more time you study 
the better. For example, I gave myself a three and a half month period of time between taking the MCAT, and that extra like two weeks was because I was just thinking like, oh, the more time the better, right? But the MCAT is actually really, really repetitive if you know the material. So by the time I was like two months in, I was already starting to feel burnt out because I had gone over the same thing over and over again. And I was seeing my friends go out and hang out and stuff like that. And I was just forcing myself to stay in, study for the MCAT. When in fact, I think that extra like two weeks, three weeks didn't make any difference. And it only served to burn me out and stress me out more after the MCAT. So if you feel confident that like you've learned most of the material before, it's not necessarily in your best interest to just stretch out your studying to as long as possible. Just give yourself that block and stick to that block of time. But the same applies for the person who's not confident in their own abilities. I would say when you start out, give yourself maybe like an extra month to study, month or two months. So instead of like a three month summer plan, maybe like a four month summer plan, but try not to extend it beyond that block because it's really easy to get burnt out. And in the future, tests only get longer. So if you get burnt out from the MCAT and you try to keep those habits going forward, you're gonna get burnt out when you take the step one and step two and things like that along as well. Now the fourth and possibly most important thing I wish I knew and regret in terms of taking the MCAT is not doing th more things untimed. Personally, I think that almost everything that is too, way too hard to be seen on the actual AMC test should be done untimed. For example, most of you world, I think you should do it untimed. I think if you do Kaplan, you should do that untimed. I think certain parts of the section bank should be done untimed, and I think that question pack one for cars, the first half should be done untimed, simply because it's too hard, and when you just try to brute force through it, it doesn't give you too much value. I think it's very, very important when you're taking the MCAT to be able to understand what it feels like to do something yourself without looking at the answers and have it be right. So when you're doing things really quickly, timed, you might simulate the testing environment more, but you never have that feeling in your head of what it's like to get the questions right and what necessarily they should be looking for before you look at the answers. Because after you look at the answers, everything seems obvious because you have that hindsight bias, but you need to do things on time so you can understand what they're looking for before you have that hindsight bias and try to figure things out for yourself. Now, if you're scoring pretty highly when you do things on time, you might know that like you don't necessarily have a content gap or you have a good strategy, and you can just work on trying to improve the speed of that strategy. But if you're scoring really low, even when you're doing things on time, well then one, you know you might have a content gap, and two, you should take things slower and try to develop a new strategy that might work better for you. I think the best analogy I can give, once again relates back to running, where like if you're training for a marathon, you don't just sprint as fast as you can, and then try to build up the amount of distance you can sprint. What you do is, try to get the entire distance at a slower pace and slowly build up the pace that you're running the marathon at. Because you're never gonna build that endurance just by running as fast as you can. Similarly to if you just try to do things time the entire time, you're never gonna build up that intuition as much as if you start doing things untimed and slowly cutting down the time. So those are the four things I regret about my MCAT experience that I wish I knew before I took the MCAT. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the support recently. And because of that, I just wanted to give away my personal seven book set for the MCAT because I think it might help one of you guys out more than it helps me just sitting at home collecting dust. So what I'm gonna do is just write down a number from one to 200 and the person that comments closest to that number first will get it. So if you happen to have guessed the number closest, I'll let you know in a week's worth of time. And once again, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and peace.